two, session number two, and I'm so happy to be able to introduce my friend Shelly, Shelly Eastbrick. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> She's a senior security operations analyst at Nexon Energy. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. So she's going to share with us the things she knows about the stock. Um, you might know Shelly because she's Nerdiosity on Twitter. So do, thank you very much for everything that you've shared with me thus far. It's her. It's her. Oh, it's not very interesting sometimes, but. Okay. Good morning! Good morning! Morning! So, I, I think this is 
stigma that we, we're still working with, but that said, it's a great place to learn and grow as an analyst. I certainly feel like that. I'm very passionate about what I do, so I, I'm glad that I found my way to security operations. And we're going to move into the meat of my presentation. The first one is get the information you need. Help desk is also a very tough job. Little story here, I was working um, a few years ago for another oil and gas company on a help desk. And there was a third level of Unix in men. And he would come by almost every day and make a joke about the helpless desk. And I know we've all felt that way sometimes, a little bit about our help desk. Well, one day, he had a problem with his, his email, his Microsoft Outlook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that the support he received that day was probably less than our best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So here's the thing. My help desk supports about 1,200 applications at work. And they have about eight to 10,000 users on any given day. So that's a really big thing to have to remember every time somebody calls to know everything that they need to, to, to know. Have we ever got bad tickets from our help desk? Sure. But again, is that a bad analyst? Or is it just that they just didn't remember what they were supposed to ask? So one of the things that we've done is help them help us. We created templates in our call logging system that have all about 90% of the things that the tickets that we get on a regular basis. And we have the questions that they need to ask right there. So when somebody calls and says, I have a malware infected PC, instead of getting a ticket that says, yeah, Bob thinks his computer's infected. We get a ticket that says, when it happened, did they see anything? Was there a screenshot? What were they doing just prior to that? Because those questions are preloaded into that template. We get better information. We can handle this incident much more quickly. And they feel like we care that they're doing their job right. So the good thing about that is, is when we do have a bigger incident, they're willing to help because they think but they think that we think, and I do think this, what they do matters. So making it accessible, quick story. My girlfriend is an educational psychologist, and what that means is, is that she goes around to schools that she's responsible for, and she does testing on children, academic, cognitive, and behavioral testing. She writes a report and she writes recommendations about how to make those kids more successful in school. Now, she's in her first year, so she started going to these schools and she got these, uh, a sense from the principals and the teachers that she was working with that they didn't have a really good feeling about educational psychologists. And the reason for that is mostly educational psychologists, they run in, they do the assessment, they write the report, and they drop it and they leave. And the staff goes, oh, I don't know what to do with this. So she was, a she was previously a teacher before she became an educational psychologist. So when she writes her report now, she then goes into the school and helps them implement those recommendations as professional development for them. In a sense, she's teaching them to fish, right? Teach men to fish. So for me, I, I'm coming up to your customer support. I didn't really have a good feeling <coughs> for what my security team was about. And sometimes, you know, who they were, depending on the company I was working for, you just kind of got a you know a policy or an email and there you go. So whether it's an image that we cultivate for ourselves or uh, or one that's sort of kind of hot, we have this kind of get off my security log. You know, it's it's just for us, security's just for us, it's not for you guys. I'll just tell you what to do. But I, I kind of think for me I'm not a, a, a network expert or a database expert or a server expert, and I think that people who do that stuff on a daily basis should be the ones to, to know how to keep it secure. Should I have to tell the server guy how to keep a secure server, or should I just have him do it and verify that it's done? I really should have brought some water. Um, I'm gonna grab some water. Pardon me. So basically what it comes down to is instead of just teaching them to fish, I think it's really important that they understand why fishing is important. Notice I say fishing, not fishing. <laughs> why they should fish and about the fish so that they can come tell me 
about the fish or how to keep something secure. It sounds like I'm talking on my, I'm going to teach my way out of a job. That's kind of the idea. But I don't think that's ever actually going to happen. Um, but I think that if my server guys or my network guys can come to me and tell me what most secure, then they can tell me what doesn't most secure. They can tell me what's not normal, and we can respond better to that. So we want to make security accessible, applicable to other, to other people in the organization. And I want some ownership out there. I want somebody else in the organization, server guys and network guys, to own their own security and us to help them to do that. Smart text, faster response, better response. Feed your resources. <laughs> this, is, this is interesting because I just told you to teach them to fish and now I'm telling you to feed them. Seriously, feed them. Um, one of the things that we do is we buy lunch for our desktop team on a quarterly basis. Because, I don't know if you know this, but desktop has like these things on it. I know this because I was one. The, the desktop part, not the guy part. Okay, so, <laughs> feeding them every once in a while, let them know we appreciate the work that they do. It's a small thing. It costs us maybe, you know, 50 bucks a quarter. But they know that we appreciate them. And when I need to call them and say, I need you down at somebody's desktop right now, they come. Rewarding heroes. So similar type of thing. But um, we have a pretty good user base. And they are really good at spotting phishing emails that we didn't detect via a manual or automatic process. Because let's face it, they can get through. And we had phone calls or emails to say, I saw this on my mailbox, but I didn't click on it. Uh, we do get the ones that I saw in my mailbox and I click on it come down right now, but we do get the ones that are, I didn't click on it, I saw it, and then we can look and see if anybody else got it and we can prevent, hopefully, disaster. So we send those people Starbucks gift cards for five bucks just to say thanks, because that guarantees they're going to do it again. A full audience is a captive audience. We also, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in response to something. Um, we put on quarterly lunch and learns uh, for security awareness. And we focus them not on sort of corporate things, but more on home stuff. So we can talk on the internet of things. We can talk on uh, mobile security for, for, uh, for, for, for mobile security. That's what I'm talking about. Mobile security, um, we did uh, one on our 2014 top 10 security predictions. And people come and they listen and they have lunch. Because, especially in the summertime with summer students, Summer students love free. But we think, oops, so forward. They say that the way to a man's heart is to his stomach, and we think that's the way to a security too. Scripting your world. Um, frequently in, in security, we say, I can't get that done, I can't have money, we have budget for that, can't get that done this year. I think that there's a couple of reasons why we don't have budget in security operations. And one of those is that there just isn't money, right? Sometimes your organization just doesn't have the money to give you. And another one is because security is hard to sell. We have, you know, cost center nature, so sometimes we get, we get lost in the shuffle and other, other departments or other projects get funded because of security. And also it's still really hard to sell to some executives. It may have been hacked so far that you know of, and there we are. But money doesn't always buy success. Expensive personal tools are lovely. I have a couple of them. But good security comes from good foundations. So we just recently implemented a scheme. And it's been great, don't get me wrong. But previous to that, we had to do a lot of manual work. We had to look at these logs and these logs and these logs and these logs. So we had to figure out you know, how to make our day a little bit better. So we started rolling our scripts trying to figure out how to, how to do certain things. And the cool thing about rolling your own or even developing tools, although there is a, just a, I don't know if I tell you guys, there's a plethora of amazing tools out there in the, in the uh, community. But the amazing thing about rolling your own scripts and, and building your own tools is you actually know how things work. You have that real deep knowledge, and it makes you a better technician. And then, when you really get into a situation where you need those tools, they're already there, they're already ready, and you know how to use them. So, one of the things that I do every time I start a new job, 
which is not very often. I'm not a dog not, not a dog dogger, but uh, is is make a routine. So I want to know what I'm doing every day. I'm a list maker. I like to know what I'm doing. I like to check those things off. So what do you do every day, or every month, or every quarter? Make that list and figure it out, and then check it twice. Make sure it's right. Drop it around to the team, to your boss. Make sure that you've got everything on there. When we every time we have somebody new come in, we make them do it for a few weeks, just to make sure that it makes sense that we covered everything. And then we add to it as well. We review it every year. We just implemented our scheme, and so we're actually totally reviewing our list because how we're doing things has changed quite a bit. But the cool part about it is if you have a list and you're doing it every day, it's repeatable, it's auditable. Every year when our our, our IT audit happens, they go. Did you do this? I go, yeah, on this date, here's the ticket, and here's the list of the things that we did. And it's easier to spot evil if you know every day what it looks like, right? To die in show. Oh, you share the pain. Share the pain is about taking that routine and literally sharing the pain with the rest of the team. I was in the UK recently, and my colleague uh, that works in our UK office says to me, it's my least favorite day of the week. Yeah, it's my least favorite day too. But we have a schedule, there's five of us, and everybody gets a day. We do our daily tasks, it takes probably four or five hours to get through those, which is why it's painful, and that's why I say share the pain. But everybody participates. And the cool part about that is, is that we don't have any silos. Everybody knows what everybody does. I'm here this week, and I'm not nervous about being here this week because my team at home knows what I do every day. Now, larger teams can be assigned by level, so in my group, we only have five of us. We don't really have juniors, seniors, and intermediates. I am a senior, but uh, really, it's just a fancy title. Um, and you can assign those by level, but at the same time, everyone really should, be, should know what's going on. And just do it again, and again, and again, and again. Finding people is easier when everybody knows what's going on, everybody has the big picture, and as a bonus, get approval for vacation or for conferences, easy because you, your boss knows it's being taken care of. Making sense of chaos. So a couple of years ago, just when I started, well, almost four years ago, when I started with Maxon, we had an incident about six months after I started. And I was still kind of new, and they hadn't really turned the response process over to me. And we had a, we had a small incident that turned, that got a little blown out of proportion. The biggest problem was, is that the guy running it, who was a very nice man, he's a senior manager, has no IR experience, and no process. So we had like 40 people in a room, technicians and managers and analysts, and nobody knew who they were talking to, nobody knew who they were supposed to report to, because was an absolute gems, but an excellent lesson learned opportunity. So, three years on, here we are, and we have a process now. And what we do is, as I said, I'm the girl, I'm the global instant response lead, and I have regional instant response lead, so in our, in our other office. They report to me, and then we have the infrastructure team leads act as what I call our regional technical leads. <coughs> so they report into the regional instant response leads, and the technical leads are crucial because they decide who works on the incident and who keeps the lights on, who's doing the day-to-day -day operations. They get to do that resourcing. That was one of the big problems that we had. We couldn't figure out previously how to resource that. And, and I think in a bigger organization, uh, when you don't have dedicated IR people, it, it's a problem. And then we documented the heck out of it, and then we made them agree to it. And that's a big one, getting buy-in. Not just from the management. I found my biggest problem with buy-in was the team leads and, and the lower level managers. How are we going to pay for this? Who's going to do it? Once you put it all on paper and get them to agree with you have that. And then we practice it. We go do add it immediately, do it on paper, or we do it live on. I think we all have we all these people trust and whatnot. We have to know where your document is. Does everybody know where their IR document is stored? That's excellent, excellent, excellent. We have two places. We have an internal share and everybody has access because it's not secret, it's not rocket science. Everyone should have access and should be able to read it. We also have an external storage in case we don't have access to the network for whatever reason, and it's my job and my team's job to keep that updated. But again, you know who reports to who, uh, who, who does what and who reports to whom, your, your response is going to be better and more accurate if you find the evil password. Find your superstars. Uh, 
Um, this is probably my favorite thing because I love finding new talent. Um, recently, in, uh, we went from the team lead and myself, this is in the last year and a half, we went from the team lead and myself to team lead and four analysts. We hired three, three new guys and we did a lot of interviewing. And the interview process was interesting because where I'm from in Calgary, it's a very small community uh, and, and getting good security people is hard. I think it probably, it's probably true in most markets, but, but Calgary has a very, very low unemployment rate and it's very hard to get good people. So we ended up hiring two guys with no security experience. Solid technical backgrounds, but no security experience. And one, it was because they had great drive and enthusiasm and nerdiosity. They were curious about all things nerdy. And to me, that was exciting. So we hired these guys. The third guy, and I don't, I don't want to leave him out, the third guy was not only had great nerdiosity, but also came with a good security background and then brought his own package. <laughs> so how many people have kids? Okay. Three-year-olds, awesome. Ten-year-olds, teenagers, oh my god, right? My nephew is six. At three, he loved to vacuum. You could put a vacuum in the end, he would do the whole floor. He's six now, he's not as excited about it. And I'm, I'm going to wager that by the time he's a teenager, he will disavow all knowledge of the vacuum that does not exist. So I want to find people uh, who can help. And I think that Finding people who can help and also who actually want to help you is like finding an enthusiastic three-year-old. <laughs> Difficult, and they don't last long sometimes. But you can find those people who really want to help you. Um, an internal story for that is because I, I, we've been working, you know, struggling with our malware detection process on the, on the desktop and the remediation process. So I was started working with one of our desktop guys who is a fantastic young man who loves to code and build stuff in his spare time. But he was bored with desktop work. And I kept thinking to myself, we're going to lose this kid. He's going to go off somewhere else to get a job. Because he's coding in five languages. He's, he's an amazing kid. So he and I are working on a project. He's built a magic USB stick that will help us with all of our collection uh, uh, of data that can have an incident and remediation that we can send out to our sites that uh, don't necessarily have dedicated IT so that they can just, if you will, push button and get some of these that we need and get that machine cleaned up and get it back on the network. You need to get buy into that. I had to get, we had to do up a document, we had to get some, some approval for his man because you're taking time away from his regular job, but it's been really worth it. Because at the end of the day, if you have better participants in your IR process and they're willing and they're far better to help you get better information, better, faster, finding the evil. Finding a way to get. So, um, a few years ago, I worked for a company and, as on the help desk, and the security manager would walk in and go, "Don't do that." And I'd say, "Well, go well, on," because it's the policy. I said, well, where, "Where's the policy?" I haven't seen this policy. It's, "Don't do that." And what? Well, but your own security. It's not a number of the things they can stream in a way. <laughs> but I think, you know, security does have this, have this uh, impression, or people have uh, an impression of security that we are the, the sayers of no, right? That we do things just to make people work harder, or in the way. Um, I worked for a company called WestJet um, before I worked for Nexus. It's an airline. It's the second largest airline in Canada. Uh, you know, Air Canada, WestJet, and then it's the But their internal slogan is find a way to guess. They want people to uh, find a way for the customer to get what they need, no matter what. So I adopted this as part of the security program. Find a way to guess, but safely. And I try not to say no, ever. That's not always, always works, but I think, first of all, if we're going to be good security people and we're going to get people to respect us, we need to walk the walk. So we need to have policies. We need to follow them. People need to know where they are and what they contain. And I think the second thing is, is if you, for us in the oil and gas industry, it's really hard to sell risk and, 
and, and to, to security and to uh, oil and gas executives because these guys pull gas out of the ground even 25 or 30 percent of the time and it's a win. They're like, yeah. So trying to convince these guys that even one incident is a bad thing is hard. It's hard. But if they understand their risks, then they are more likely to understand why you might have to say no. So we try to, as much as possible, work with our business and bring them in as partners as opposed to just telling. That helps us build trust with them. Um, they are more likely now to come to us. But I would say, if you don't have to, don't say no. Find a way to guess. Because at the end of the day, if you have buy-in from your people, they're coming to you for security, we don't have to work as hard. And then we don't have to say no. Because they did it right the first time. My last point, um, and this is the one I have trouble with, is, is pick your battles. So, I hate being wrong. I hate it so much. It's one of the things that drives me. Um, but I have learned over the years that sometimes you need to get along with everyone. I'm still working on. And sometimes you don't have to be wrong when you're not right, if that makes sense. You have to go along to get along a little bit. So I have a uh, desktop team lead at work, and he and I have butted heads a few times. We used to send them tickets, and if they didn't have exactly the right information that he wanted in, he would send it back. No work done on it. We wouldn't call to say, hey, I just missed this and this ticket. Can you, can, you, can you look this up for me? Can you just, or look it up yourself, buddy. The username, maybe. I can use uh, PS Logon just as well as he can. But, so we just send them to get back. We wouldn't even tell you, just drop it back in the queue. If you were looking at the queue, that malware infected PC would sit on, on, on the network for another hour, 45 minutes, until, you, until we saw the ticket. And then we had to be excited about it. So I was ready to go down to his office, like the 80th time that this happened, and just do something horrible. But cooler heads prevailed, uh, i.e. my team lead, because he's just a really cool dude, and he's teaching me a lot about not always having to be right. And what we do now is we overlook the information. We put in everything we could possibly think of, so that ticket will never come back. The upside of this is, is that when we need to be right, we have buy-in to do that, particularly from his boss. I'm not telling that I get along any well any better with this team lead, but I get buy-in from his, his boss when we need to be right, because we are accommodating for them. So for me, again, this is because I, I hate being wrong. Get an opinion. If, you, if you're going to charge in uh, all guns blazing, maybe talk to somebody. My team, like, team lead, like I said, he's a great Russian guy. <coughs> quite a bit. And uh, he's very calm. So I can go over and go, you know what, this is in the most accountable. Let's just, let's go have a coffee. Because as we all know, we catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. So better response time if you haven't kissed everybody off. This is the, I'm going to wrap it up in a big package. So I can stitch it up, that was the joke. Sharing the pain, 
If everybody knows what you're doing on a daily basis, one, again, I said getting vacation approval, much easier. But two, it really helps out with things like alert fatigue. You've got somebody that's looking at the same thing every day, every day, every day. They're going to lose their mind, lose their interest. But rotating everybody around really helps, helps relieve some of that. It makes sense if they ask, make sure everybody knows their role, who they're supposed to report to, what they're supposed to do, and practice, practice, practice. Because let's face it, we've all been in that incident where we're all running around like chickens. And I hate, I hate being that person. Finding your superstars, find the people that want to help you and can help you. Find the talented folks in your organization who are going to make great security people or just great helpers. And find a way to guess. Don't say no. Get them to tell me you. Build trust. Teach them about their risk tolerance. Uh, and, and, and eventually, they come to us and we just monitor the crap out of them. And lastly, pick your battles. So, being right isn't the only thing. Like I said, still working on that one. But being right isn't the only thing. Uh, sometimes it makes sense to let somebody pass on something so that you can win the next time when it's really important. So, I am Shelly Eastbrook, and I thank you and I thank Sam for letting me be here today because um, this is super exciting for me. Um, and I would love if anybody has any questions or uh,